Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the snowy French Alps, where the roads are looking rather white and slippery. And welcome also, of course, to the Schneemobile. Schnee, German, snow, get it, Schneemobile. Yeah, you're probably there already. The AMG GTR. I've been out here in Megève in the Alps for a couple of days. I've had an amazing time skiing. It's basically been snowing non-stop. So I've not really filmed anything with the car because, well, taking it out is a little bit risky, but also the snow up on the slopes has been awesome. Anyway, today it is sadly time for me to depart and head back towards Frankfurt. But on the way out of Megève, I'm gonna see what I can do with this car in terms of finding some nice roads to drive on and have a good time. And I think going up a hill like that would potentially work, but it's quite narrow if it goes wrong. Maybe I'll test it out and see what it's like. I'll see what I can find basically on the way out of town. It's gonna to be about a seven, eight hour drive for me today, but this is pretty much the perfect car to drive it in. As you've seen, I'm going pretty much for the highest mileage AMG GTR. It's loaded back up with all my luggage, with my skis, with everything in the boot. It all fits fine, it's comfortable, it's a good long distance cruiser. I am loving it. So let's get today started and go exploring. Okay then, it is go time. Everything is set, car is fully loaded. I haven't set a navigation yet. As always, I'm gonna use Waze on my mobile phone just for long distance journeys. I think Waze is better. It shows you all the traffic on the motorways. Make sure you don't have a desperately inconvenient journey. But like I said, we're up the mountain. We're about, I think, 1100 meters, something like that. So there's a fair bit of snow around. I will take it slowly and carefully in comfort mode to start. The car is, I've been letting it run a bit, so it's a bit warmed up. But let's make our way out of here. Well, we have some grip. Should we try it? No, let's not go up that hill for now. Let's go this way. We've got some massive bumps in front of me that I have to be very careful over because, after all, supercar is not the uh, best ground clearance in the world. And then here, amusingly, we're gonna go over the ski piste. So literally, <laughs> as you can see right now, skiers crossing in front, and we're gonna go down. But the best thing about having winter tires, the Pirelli Softer Zeros, I know I've talked about it a lot, is that you can just drive on this kind of terrain where Typically, that's a no-go. Um, if you have normal tires on the car, the Sport Cup 2s especially right now, I would be completely stranded. Now we're going down there, but I'm gonna do a U-turn because I can't make that corner. And down we go. Now the worst bit about going downhill is the lack of braking. So you wanna be very, very careful doing this and not let the speed build up too much. Well, actually, we've got pretty good control right now. It's driving in a straight line, which is nice. Obviously there are the bits of tarmac you can see, but don't be fooled, it's deceptive. It is very, very icy. It's just fun that there is literally a green ski piece right here, and then the bubble gondola lift next to that going up the mountain. So it's been amazing for the snow out here. Absolutely amazing. I'm just hoping that there's gonna be a bit of snow down here around the town, because I kind of want to enjoy driving on it rather than just hitting the motorway straight away. It's definitely odd walking past everybody getting set for their day skiing, but I'm gonna be very careful of skis because skis would do a lot of damage to your paintwork, even with PPF. Now, PPF might soften the impact and the blow, but ski edges are metal and very sharp, so I don't wanna mess with any of those as we go to the car park here. Now, it's all been very, very salted, although right in front of me, I can see a slippy bit. So in comfort mode in this car, traction is seriously limited. It will not let you slide in any form. What I'm gonna test though now, just here, is pop it into individual mode, which I've got set up so it gets a bit noisier and sportier. The car is warm, fortunately. Um, but this is where the traction control toggle is the most interesting, because if you just put your foot down, it'll go around a bit, but you can hear the traction is being very, very throttled, limited at the moment. It's going around with pleasure, but it's stopping me going maximum power. So this is where we can play inside here with pressing DSC off to go fully off. And then we have the traction control toggle, which we can flick a few notches. Yeah, there we go. Now it's going straight round. I'm literally pirouetting.
Safe to say that has been an awful lot of fun. But now that we head back onto the road, let's turn traction back to a more sensible setting. Remember, it is slippy and we do have curbs. And I can tell you, if you go sideways in a car like this into a curb, it is going to cost you an awful lot of money. So I do not want to be doing that right now. We would damage all sorts of sus suspension components. But slightly sadly, the roads are well salted and cleared. So unfortunately for me, there is not going to be that much more skiddy time. However, that was awesome fun, as you've probably seen. But just the ability this car has to have grip when you need it by having the winter tires, but then when you put all 585 horsepower down to completely brake grip and have a good time. And I can see a little car park right here with some quite fresh snow on it, so I'm gonna pull in here. I'm in a very mischievous mood this morning. Um, in we go, let's see if we can handle this. There's a big tractor up there, but this is proper snow and we can just drive around on it and then we can do that. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's just so much fun that you can do this, that it has this ability. Okay, and traction control, the way you can go through the different settings, just, you have complete freedom for how much slide you want, like this. We go nowhere, because traction is very low and I'm using full power, or we can go out onto the road and you know set it how we want it. And really, I know I beat on about it a lot, but this is so much a car, but it's just one car for every purpose. And I knew it would be before I got it. I knew that this would be the car that I could use for everything. And if it was my only car, I'd be over the moon with it just to use it for everything. Now, it might be expensive to do the kind of mileage I want to do on it, but if there was ever gonna be a car, it's the Mercedes. It's gonna be reliable, it's gonna last, it's gonna work. Out on the roads then, just the sound, the crackles. Nobody makes a bi-turbo V8 sound this good. McLaren should take note from this engine in the AMGs. I know it's a front engine, it's got more exhaust work, but it can do things. The exhaust system itself though is crazy. It's basically a straight pipe. Those side exit exhaust pipes don't go through the back box. So when you're in race mode and you put your foot down and it, the airflow opens the valves, it is full sound. Like you literally changing the back box will do nothing. The only way you can make this car noisier is if you did a downpipe and that would be a bit mental. But driving out here, just this car in this environment, in the mountains, in the snow, surrounded by white, it's just completely alien. I think it, there's something about that that I just think is cool. And I hope you guys do as well. I know it's, some people would say it's, you know, it's a special, fairly limited edition car. It's not a numbered edition, but it is limited in terms of build. There's a very long wait list to get one of these. Maybe I should treat it better. But to me, I really want to share using this car all the time with you guys. That's what this story is for me. So this year we're going to go on some crazy trips. I think, well, I'm trying to consider in my head whether I should take it down to the south of Spain and Portugal and maybe even across to Morocco, whether I should go out to Scandinavia, go around Sweden and Norway with it in the summer, go out to the Atlantic Road, whether maybe I should go back to the Balkans, to uh, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia, maybe even further. Who even knows what we could do with this car? Oh, that's my navigation. A friend has beeped at me, honked. Actually, looking at the nav, it's only six hours and nine minutes, it's saying, which is better than I thought as well. So not too bad a drive today, and especially in this car, I am very, very happy to be enjoying it. Hopefully as we get out of here, we've got some mountain roads as well, uh, just to enjoy the drive and the sounds. The best thing about the mountains, the twisty roads that we can have some fun on. And I just love driving in this kind of environment. It's got enough grip, we've got enough, more than enough power, rock walls that make the sound echo back. The steering in this car with the four-wheel steering, just an awesome sensation. Any time of year, perfect tool for fun. <laughs> and quick, very quick, believe me. Those noises. Let's put the window down. to Switzerland. So, the land of being exceptionally careful with how quickly you drive, one kilometer an hour over in a car like this, and they will do everything they can to get you in a lot of trouble. So, I've been driving, I think, for about an hour or so. My nav's just having a little thinking moment. Um, but now, Switzerland, I've got I've gone an interesting way. So, I'm kind of going through Geneva, and then out, and then obviously we're gonna have the autobahns when we get to Germany. So, hopefully Switzerland goes without drama, straight through the country and out the other side, and then it'll be about three hours, I think, up through the German autobahns, where I'll be speed limited to 280 kilometers an hour is the rating on these tires. You should always look up the rating. Um, so we can't go for a 300 plus run, unfortunately today, but we can enjoy some speed and some power and the, well, where safety allows, of course, nothing silly. 
Well, I find myself driving straight through the middle of Geneva and I've been car spotted. I wasn't expecting that, but this is like a pinch point in the city center beside the lake. So to get round, you basically go right past where the central city, the center of the city hotels are, the nicest hotels in Geneva, and we'll be back here for the motor show. But uh, I don't think those guys expected to see this car today. So whoever you guys were, nice to, uh, nice to see you there. But we'll head on over. Sometimes there's some cool stuff to see. I'm not really here for car spotting though, but if I do catch a glimpse of anything, I'll pull over. But it's really, really pretty. It's a very, very nice city, a very nice city center. And around here was where all of the Koenigseggs were at last year's Geneva Motor Show. So hopefully they, those guys do that again this year and there'll be even more to see. But you've got the uh, Four Seasons Hotel just here, which has been a venue for some awesome stuff that I've made videos with in the past. Catch a glimpse, what do we have? Panamera, nothing, nah, nothing that stands out and screams supercar to me. But, uh, no, that was a bike. But I did see a 911 Turbo S just before this clip, and no doubt there's a lot around here, just it's a bit early in the day still. It's actually so strange driving through Geneva. I just did not expect or think that was my route today, which logically it was, but we'll be back here properly in not really that long. And there's an AMG GTS coming the other way, recognizable by the different grille, of course, at the front, and a couple of other styling things. And this is so wide. If you see the two cars next to each other, how much wider the GTR is, is just crazy. It's like a couple of inches on each corner. It is insane. Annoyingly, it's now raining, but I just clicked that I'm going right past Perigo cars. Now, I've shot a few videos with the guys at Perigo, Greg in particular with the Ferrari F40 you might have seen, and in the past I've driven the Miura as well. So I figured that given it's like a kilometre off this motorway, it would almost be rude not to pop by and say hello. So let's go have a quick look and see what's at Perigo. We've arrived then at Perigo Cars, and I can see a Project 7 inside, a California and a TDF, but it looks like all the lights are off, which suggests they're closed, unfortunately. That is most sad. I won't be able to go and catch up with everybody, but we can have a quick glance through the window in a second. I just got super lucky as I arrived. John from Perigo just locked up, and well, we're able to take a quick glimpse inside, which is really, really nice, and come and have a look at this up close. The Jaguar Project 7, based on the F-Type with the 5-litre V8, of course, but this in the dark green with seen through glasses, favorite white dot, looks really, really nice. Obviously, open top with the buttress, doesn't have much by way of a roof. You can loosely attach a fabric thing contraption over the top of it, but you basically wouldn't. It has a lower windscreen than the standard F-Type, so more rake to it. Just makes it look sporty, aggressive, and super cool with the lipstick as well around the front grille. Just catch a glimpse of that. I can't imagine there are exactly many of those here in Switzerland at all. Behind it, the F12 TDF, naturally. Very, very nice car. We saw that one when I was here last time around, but super collectible item. Very nice Porsche behind that, DB11, and an array of nice cars as well in here. Scuderia without a painted stripe, which is quite unusual, and an SLR, of course. The best treat here is to pop upstairs to check out the collection, the toy shop, I think you could call it, up here, including that F40, the one that I drove, that was an epic experience. But look around, we are surrounded by some lovely, lovely machines. Up here, that is of course pretty special. What else do we have coming back? Another GTS, second one seen today. F12. Yeah, lots of nice cars, including an extra clam from the front of an F40 up there. Well, that was lucky timing to be able to pop by. We've seen this SV before, but the SV Roadster at the end. And if I come all the way over, my car is parked just down there. Spontaneity is always the best, and right after visiting Perigo, we have come to this location, which is underneath the motorway that I'll be driving on again in a second. Loads of graffiti, really cool for taking some photos, as you can see, by basically everything around us in this place, which is really, really awesome. And the, the almost paradox of the super modern, aggressive car with this kind of environment has made for some awesome shots, and we're a bit sheltered from the rain as well, quite nice. Anywho, just a little stop, a bit random, I know, but why not? We've got the most got the opportunity, make the most of it. Okay, let's hear it under here and see what this exhaust system that I was talking about earlier sounds like. <laughs> Not bad! I'm back on the road and 
as you can see, it is now a little bit snowy. We've had lots of tunnels and bridges, which is always good fun, but it's one degree. The snowfall is really rather heavy, so gentle and steady wins the race, I think, as we cross through Switzerland. But I gather it might be like this pretty much the whole way, so I have to see what that does to my autobahn fun. But so far, a pretty chilled journey, really, taking it easy. I'm gonna pull in now just to grab some snacks and stuff, um, and then continue on. Oh my goodness me, there is a car on fire at the side of the motorway. My God. The guy was well out of it and there was another car looking after them. What? In the snow? I've, I've, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. There's an emergency services vehicle arriving now coming from the other direction. Wow. That was crazy! And three fire engines have just gone past me in the other direction, as well as a whole load of police cars. That was a big... That, I've never seen that. I've done many, many miles in all sorts of places, but I have never seen a car on fire. And obviously the first thing that goes through your mind, and I could see from a long way ahead, was that the occupant of the car was out and had come back up the motorway, and that there was another car stopped already in attendance. And then you've got all the emergency service vehicles. But the last thing in the world I'm going to do when a car is on fire is stop anywhere near it, because then you're completely a danger yourself. Safety first always, whenever required, or whenever in that kind of situation. But what did I just see? I, I'm completely like, like, wow, what, how? Especially in this weather, that is horrendously unpleasant for the guy, and I hope nobody's injured or didn't look like anybody was gonna be injured in that uh, situation. But, uh, yeah, like, how, what? I've crossed the border, that means welcome to Germany. We're back on the autobahns where even though it's kind of busy, it's quite congested, hopefully we'll get some good pace and start pulling down the minutes from the GPS arrival time. I'm looking forward to getting back to Frankfurt, of course. It's the first time I'll have had two of my cars there at the new flat at the same time. So we've got a second space in the garage, which annoyingly is not next to my first space, but it's not too far away. Maybe I can get my neighbor to move and swap spaces, but we're on the restricted autobahns, which means 160, 170, 180, you get the point, even with the winter tires, that can go up to 280. I don't think in this weather we're gonna be doing a VMAX run uh, in this car at all. Maybe come spring when I put it back on the Sport Cup 2s, the normal summer tire, and I can get a clear run on an early, on, early on a Sunday morning, do everything like I did with the McLaren when I took that up to uh, VMAX. But you know, we just cruise along at 190, 195-ish, no problem at all. And that, that's what's so good about driving on these roads. Everybody's in tune and they're just safe to do this. Now, obviously you have to keep your wits about you. You're looking miles up the road, which you'll notice I don't really look at the camera at all while we're driving on the autobahns. When people see me coming, they tuck over. And I mean, even if you do it in summer and a much clearer day than this, it's starting to get dark here now. Um, you feel very safe in this kind of place, which is just great. 200 now, 210, we're going go for 220-ish, and then there's some roadworks ahead, so we've got to be a bit sensible. But now it's completely deserted, everybody's gone, which is great for getting progress. We'll hopefully take the minutes now, and it will be next stop Frankfurt. Obviously, we need this in noisy mode. Let's drop some gears. There we go. That sounded nuts! So clearly the car has a very warm exhaust, given that I've been driving for a long time. Autobahn that I'm on at the moment is actually the stretch that I did 324 kilometers an hour in in my McLaren But tonight we're not going to be going even within a hundred kilometers an hour of that because well, it's still raining It's not as bad as it was, but it's still very very gloomy I'm only about 15 minutes away now from the center of Frankfurt That's one of the really cool things about being in Frankfurt you can get in and out of the city so easily and quickly So just to the final stretch hopefully no dramas and then we will pull into the garage and park in the new parking space it's not often that you'll hear me say this, but I really can't wait for this journey to be over. It is so exhausting driving in this kind of weather, these conditions. I am totally wiped out. I mean, it's been four or five hours of non-stop staring through the downpour in front of me to try and look up the road. And it's amazing how that intensity makes a journey much more challenging. I mean, the, the drive from London to Megève was way longer than today's journey. Today's has been six or seven hours. Coming down from London was 11 or so. But it's all about 
the conditions. That was a completely empty road, gentle drive, no stress. And today's is just, it's wiped me out. I just need to get inside and chill out and relax a bit because honestly, this has been, as a drive goes, really, really intense, properly intense. And the entry to Frankfurt, this is kind of my point at which it feels like I'm getting back into the city when you start seeing the split between different directions within Frankfurt. You come off the motorway down onto the, uh, the town roads and the speed limit goes down, which I mean, is a shame, it's not like today has been a, a brisk drive in any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, here we are, into the city now, nearly home. We are back! So, into the garage we go, and there is the focus. This is strange being here. I haven't been here for a while. But now, I have a substantially larger parking space, and amusingly, it's parking space number 67, which is appropriate given the number plates on this car. SH67MEE chosen because, of course, AMG was founded in 1967. I've probably bored you to death with that one now. This has been quite, I guess, a long vlog video as they go, a long journey today, but it started off quite a bit of fun this morning on the snow in Mujev. Then stopping at Perigo was a nice random spontaneous bonus. But here we are, journey complete. The car now has 6,700 kilometers on it. Definitely continuing my journey to make it the highest mileage AMG GTR. And that's it. I've got to unload the car, take all of my stuff upstairs. Quite fun though to have the two cars here in Germany. Um, for now, obviously not for too much longer because the Focus RS will go back to the UK to be swapped for the red edition. This won't stay here for too long either because there's something I'm gonna use it for in England in the not too distant future as well. But that's been a comfortable car to drive, but this weather, my word, it has been quite dramatic and certainly completely exhausted me. I am over the moon about this car in every way. I mean, I've said that more than enough times and really and truly every journey just emphasizes it even more. But I will wrap this one up for there. There is a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. I think there always is. So make sure you stay subscribed, stay tuned. I'm losing my words. Clearly I need a rest and I will catch up with you again in the next video. Thank you very much as always, guys. I'll see you then. Cheers.